Hello everyone, Chase Groves here with New Day Genetics and uh, here with a good friend of mine, Jeremy Huff. We're actually in Little Rock, Arkansas at the Young Farmer and Ranchers Conference uh, here for that. And uh, actually just uh, Jeremy done a presentation, uh, had the rainfall simulator. But I think before we start on that, Jeremy, let's, let's let you introduce yourself uh, in a little bit uh, about yourself, where you're from, your family, and of that sort. All okay. right, thanks Chase. Uh, Jeremy Huff, uh, State Grazing Land Specialist for the USDA Natural Resources Conservation Service. I cover Arkansas. Um, originally from MENA, uh, that's where we I live right now with my uh, family, my wife and two kids. Uh, we, uh, with my my family's operation, we run a cow calf operation, and uh, and I really enjoy the the work that we do, and uh, very fortunate to be in this position. Uh, I, I'm a graduate of Eastern Oklahoma State College and, and University of Arkansas and uh, uh, glad to, to have this profession and work with others like Chase and, and Grazing. Well, you know, and I think that's good, Jeremy. Uh, Jeremy and I have a really good relationship and I bug him a lot, And uh, but it goes back beyond that of you just being the state grazing specialist. Right. Jeremy and I met uh, many moons ago, it doesn't seem that long ago, in high school. Right. But then we both attended college together as on livestock judging team, and we're not going to try to get in too much of debate and differences here. Jeremy and I could really uh, uh, have a good argument about uh, about who saw some livestock a little different. But that's and for you another... know who would win too. <laughs> that's that's for another video. But no, with that. But you know, uh, I guess with this and you know doing these series, and I think it ties in great. I think Jeremy saw that our. We just done a cattle call talking about some watering systems with that. And I think uh, we can talk, you know, you being the state grazing specialist and, and just uh, your perception, and even using on your own operation, you know, uh, you know, we kind of tend as beef producers, we overlook grass. You know, we're more focused on raising beef. Exactly. You know, selecting genetics, uh, herd health, you know, trying to just do the best. And I think we overlook grass production exactly and one thing i say a lot is you know first uh, for me and, and kind of change my perception i'm a grass farmer first won't you touch on that a little bit you know your opinion and your thoughts and what's really important how we overlook the big picture of that as beef producers sometimes. yeah yeah without grass we have nothing just like chase said we are first we're grass <coughs> farmers and and I, I think you have to have that mindset to be grass farmers and um I'll tell you what, Arkansas has did a, a great job in, in the past uh, recent years on, on emphasizing good forage management, good grazing management, and, and Chase, to be honest with you, it's because of you know, a few reasons. Number one, uh, producers like yourself and, and others, many others that uh, you know, will step outside the box and take chances and, and do good grazing manage, management strategies mm -hmm. and, and try them, and we're having a lot with that, having a success. And, and number two, we, we have a lot of local field offices that promote it good. And number three, our, our conservation partners, Farm Bureau and uh, others that uh, are willing to, to uh, help promote it. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I know. And I think, you know, and that's where I first learned about it to our friends to the north. Yes. You know, and especially for New Day Genetics, it's located in central Missouri. You know, and, and that's, that's been a time-tested, you know, a, a, a production model of using rotational grazing and it's kind of moving its way south yes you know went that and you know and it, as as we said you said earlier in your uh, in your or one thing that stuck in my mind out of your your deal that we just got through you know it's hard to make new soil right. I and mean, that's you know there's a lot lots of time and lots of chemistry that goes into that and that's something we don't have and I think if we tie that to be you know young producers as myself you know, not only is uh, land value high, cost of production is high, and we have to be the most efficient that we can be. You know, where does where does some intensive grade, you know, some MIG programs, where does that fit in there and help a young producer be more efficient and maybe make it in a world where he can't get the, you know, the the land mass that he needs to be able to make a living? Right. You know, you, you mentioned about the soil, and to me, there's nothing more important than our soil and taking care of it. Uh, one of the things that we've noticed, Chase, with uh, management intensive grazing, grazing management, is is we have a tendency to increase our organic matters mm -hmm. in our soil. Yeah. Uh, we have some producers across the state that's uh, is getting really good high uh, organic matter readings, 
with uh, with their grazing management and you know and Chase I think for a young producer uh, like ourselves you know <clears throat> high organic matter does a lot of things it provides nitrogen to the soil has that sponge holding uh, water capacity that and uh, it also just helps the infiltration uh, when it does rain so you know <clears throat> applying grazing management principles uh, their strategies uh, helping to build the soil instead of losing yep. it yep. Uh, to me, I think it, it would really help a young farmer. Yeah, yeah, no, and it, you know, it makes us more efficient in our bottom line is we're, bring, we're putting more money in our pocket. You yes. know, you, you mentioned less fertilizer, that's less cost. Exactly. Uh, you know, and, and you know, one thing that I've seen in my own operation is, is you know, add, and adding this to the way I, my production model is just my my carrying capacity. Exactly. You know, I can't. You know, I would love to find more land and increase my cow herd, but it's just the opportunity isn't there. And so, uh, for me, the best way to grow that cow herd is to make it more efficient of how many I run per acre. And I think that's really really important in today's time. Exactly, and that's one of the things that grazing management, the the early researchers found that you can increase your stocking rates. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, instead of buying more land and, and on and on, do things like you're doing and so many others are doing is is being more efficient. Uh, grazing management, you can increase your efficiency and and therefore you can run more uh, more head. Yeah. And for a young producer yeah. uh, like yourself, you know, that means so much. Yeah. Uh, to run a few head and sell a few sell a few more kids. Yeah. So. Yeah. You know, and and I guess kind of changing the. Uh, tune just a little bit and, and talking, you know, uh, we're not so much, Arkansas's pretty, I mean, we're diverse in terms of our agriculture, but if you look at a map of Arkansas, we have the Delta, right. we have the western part, you know, and I guess it's kind of unique in my area, the southwestern part of the state. Uh, you know, explain a little bit your thoughts and opinions, maybe, you know, uh, adding uh, cattle or hooves is the way I like to say it, back on farmland. Right. And I think that worked good because we have some customers, you know, that it's, it's in places where they graze and farm. Uh, you know, uh, are we missing the point here of taking cattle off of this farmland in terms of soil quality and soil health in, in, in your mind? Cattle are, are needed on land, all right? That animal impact is, is, is really needed. You know, Chase, South Arkansas, there's, there's been years and years of droughts. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, many folks they've had to sell out and so forth. And uh, you know, the animal impact and what that does on the land. You know, you can't put a dollar figure on yeah. that. We need yeah. cattle. We need livestock on the land, without yeah. a doubt. Yeah, yeah, and just that healthy. You know, we talk about growing grass. You know, and we and you know, there's lots of scientific research on how much we need to take, how much we need, and then there's a lot of personal opinions. Exactly. But I think we grow this grass, but I still think it's important that we keep Mother Nature in mind. You know, many, many moons ago, when you when you talk about these systems, you always they always go back to mimicking nature as the bison's moved across. Right. So I think it's still important we need to grow these things, but then at the same time we need to bite it off, harvest it. Mm. You know, and I think that's a good picture of cattle. You know, as we said earlier in this segment, we're grass farmers and cattle are just our combines. Exactly. That's what we harvest that with, hay cutter, however you want to talk it. So I think that's really, really important and, yeah. and firmly believe yeah. that that should be, you know, with that. There's a lot to say about rest and recovery. Yeah, and yeah, I, yeah. Uh, I speak highly on giving your pastures rest and, yeah. uh, and also after they graze, uh, you know, give that rest that is, that's needed for the land. So. Well, I think that's a good transition. Let's talk about a little bit of that. You know, a new producer, you know, hearing about this, and you can be overwhelmed. Uh, when I first started researching and, and trying to learn, you can be tremendously overwhelmed right. about the information's out there. Let's talk a little bit about rest. I mean, what's, yes. what's you know, I know you can get lots of different numbers, and, you know, and we can have... Uh, you know, and I guess a lot of it depends on what you're trying to accomplish. Your goals. But let's talk about, you know, rest a little bit. Just yeah. cover that. Yeah, you know, that's one, one of the main points that we try to emphasize is providing your pastures rest. And not that not only helps your forages, it helps your mm -hmm. soil in, in so many facets. And, you know, it's really simple. If you have four pastures, rotate every seven days. 
uh, if your animal forage balance allows you to do that. That's 21 days of rest in each of those pastures, 75% rest. You know, someone that has 10 pastures and, and their animal forage balance allows them to rotate every seven days. That's 63 days of rest in each of those pastures. And, and uh, you know, that helps with the leaf content, growing more leaves, capturing that solar energy. Yeah. You know, a lot of good things. So. Yeah. And, it, you know, you threw those numbers out there to us. Right. And, you know, I want to go, and, and sometimes if you look at scientific base, you hear those numbers, right. and producers get scared. And, and you know, I want to, and, and just to add to that and build on that, throw it from the producer side, you know, let's, let's try not to focus as much on the numbers, which you're showing the reason right. why we do it, but let's, let's watch the cattle. Exactly. And, you know, it, this isn't scientific of what we're doing you know you there's a learning curve to it and that's what i like to tell guys who do this oh, you know i just don't know if i can make it work and and you know from your standpoint what do you tell producers yeah. i mean just let the animals you know watch watch the cattle the cattle will teach you so many yeah. things again i'll say that again cattle will teach you mm -hmm. so many things and in starting out chase you made a good point you know starting out it can be a daunting task yeah Yep. But I would recommend start off slow. Mm -hmm. Everything doesn't have to be perfect. Yeah. And make your system flexible, all right? And, uh, you know, what works for one producer will not work for the other producer. So, uh, you know, start off small and uh, just keep, keep your system very yep. flexible. So. Well, and, and I think that it's great that, you know, and we didn't even tie these two together, but if you look at that previous video of Jaron and Byron done, exactly. talking about the water, Byron, from a producer standpoint, his comment was, let's keep it flexible. Exactly. Because you never know in five to ten years where you're going to be, yeah. what you're going to be doing. So I think that's really, really important, you know, with that. You know, we've covered a lot here, Jeremy, and, and, and I think moving forward, you know, if you follow our New Day Genetics and how we, you know, we, we sell in the fescue belt. In which in Arkansas, we have quite a bit of fescue, particularly in the northern half, northwestern part of the state uh, with that. And, you know, uh, Jeremy and I have had some conversations before. You know, we, we really uh, believe in the ranch ready, developing those cattle on, on, uh, on grass and, and grazing. You know, let's talk a little bit about animal behavior. And, and before we started, we were, we were discussing that a little bit. And you talked about, you know, stocking density and, and forage availability. Why don't you go over a little bit about that, about uh, foraging, you know, behavior right. in cattle? That's something that... I don't think is looked at enough mm -hmm. and to me there's nothing I'd rather do is go out and watch the cows yeah. and try to pick up what they're doing you know and and you can learn so much by look watching the cattle uh, a few things that Chase and I was talking about is whenever you do increase your stocking rates I mean those those mm -hmm. cattle they have to forage harder mm -hmm. and so forth and yeah. they're they're a little bit more aggressive on on their grazing and and also when it, it depends on whenever your forage, you have a, a lot of quality, a lot of availability of forage, and, and your, your grazing pressures and your, mm -hmm. uh, that, that kind of things, that can decrease. So yeah, it's, uh, it changes throughout the time, makes yeah. a big difference. Well, and, and from you know, a producer standpoint, one thing I like about you know, some more intensive grazing management that I've seen you know, my cattle, you know, they have to get out and compete for those forages so they're more or less to be waiting on a handout from me is what I like to say. it. So, you know, a cow, I mean, they're here to work for us. I mean, we grow that grass. We talk about soil health, soil quality. You know, we, it, when Mother Nature sends us rain or allows us moisture, we grow that, you know, and then the cattle have the unique ability to take that forage that's no use to you and I and turn it into a protein source that's really, really good. Chase, we have an old, I guess, old mentor and, and mm -hmm. friend. Uh, he used to always say, those cows have to work for you. Yep. And yep. Uh, if they don't work for you, uh, they need to head to the yep. cell barn. So yep. I, I believe 100%, you know, personally, uh, that if the cows are not working for you, uh, you need to find some that do work for you, yeah. uh, that are the easy keeping, easy fleshing type, and low maintenance, yeah. and uh, uh, that will be profitable for yeah. you. Well, Jeremy, I appreciate it. Thank you so it's much, Chase. Joy. And, you know, and, and just talking about a few of those deals, and, it, you know, if you have some questions, you can look us up at, at the New Day team. I know uh, as, as a whole, we're a large number of producers that all of them implement some kind of MIG program one way or another exactly. in their program. And I think that's an ideal that we built New Day Genetics around 
uh, to making ranch ready genetics that are that that know how to forge and go out and make a living for producers so like i say uh, we appreciate you checking in with us and catch us next time on our next cattle call